today, my friends, we are going to have a good old fashioned chat about products. It's kind of around the time that I should be doing my May favorites, but I don't know. I kind of feel like I need like another week or so to um, accumulate some more monthly favorites. So I thought, why don't we do a summer beauty favorites video? Because I actually do have quite a few products, skincare, sun care, self tan, that realm of products and some makeup. So I thought I definitely had a nice little lineup to talk to you guys about my favorite summertime products. However, it is almost June and it's literally like the farthest thing from summer right now on the East Coast. It's like super rainy, so I know that the lighting per usual is probably like whack and I have baby hairs for days, but we're gonna talk about summer beauty products nonetheless. Skincare. None of these things will be a surprise. In fact, nothing in this video is going to be a surprise, but I thought it might just be a nice resource to have all of this together. So in the summertime, I, okay, just to back up, thank you, recycling truck. Very glad you exist. Actually, I shouldn't bitch about the recycling truck. I am normal skin type, although I feel like people are moving more in the direction of not adhering to a particular skin type and being just sort of more intuitive about their skincare or viewing their face as kind of, <laughs> this sounds so pretentious, but like micro terrains on your skin. So I treat my skin intuitively and I treat it as I guess basically combination because I kind of think all of us are pretty much combination. I'm pretty normal, although I can produce excess oil on my nose. I do get some congested pores on my nose and chin, and then I can get a sort of uh, dryness sometimes here and sometimes on my cheeks. I mean, it really depends. Very long-winded explanation about my skin type. So in the summertime, definitely I feel like my skin produces uh, more oil and I want more of a deep clean. So the two cleansers that, I mean, I really use them all year round, but I will bump up their usage in the summertime is the Osmia Black Clay Facial Soap, and then this will be the first summer that I've had this, but it's Stark Eclipse. And these are both uh, sort of charcoal detox drawing, pulling sorts of cleansers. This one is a little bit more intense, so I think that it's actually a perfect summertime cleanser for all skin types. And the Osmia Black Clay Facial Soap I use year round. I feel that it's gentle enough to use year round. It is a bar soap that I've loved for, since it was featured in the Beauty Heroes box, whenever that was. I just cut pieces off and keep it in the shower and I do it as a second cleanse like two to three times a week probably. I alternate my cleansers a lot. And then I've been using Eclipse Max once a week, but I feel like I'll probably bump it up um, in the summertime. So I feel like these are going to be two indispensable face cleansers for me this summer. I do have two other products from Stark. I know that I talk about Stark a lot just because it's what I've been using lately and I really like the products. And I feel that Jess really formulates for um, my skin type more in the spring and summer, especially. I mean, I can use her products year round. I feel that her products are very, very balancing and toning. So I would also recommend Petrichor, which is her toner. And this is um, definitely one of the more, I mean, it's not drying at all, it's not stripping, it's very just balancing. And I feel that that's what at least my skin wants in the summertime is just to get clean, to get the pores clean, and to stay balanced. And I do feel that all of Stark's products also work quite synergistically, so I think this pair would be really great. I do also want to mention her daytime oil, the City Recalibrating Oil, because again, I feel it's one of the more balancing products in her line, and also it has Rice Bran Oil, which provides unofficially a sort of a base level of sun protection to your skin. It doesn't have any SPF claims on it at all, but the constituents of this um, are kind of nice to use in the summertime when you might be getting more sun. It's just kind of like, infusing a first layer of protection in your skincare. The other face oil I want to mention, and it's been in my mind because uh, pretty soon I'm gonna do my face oil serum lineup video, which I'm very, very excited to do actually. The other face oil that I would recommend for summer and fall, after you're sort of repairing any sort of sun damage you might get, is the Laurel Sun Damage Repair Serum. 
That is actually one of my favorite face oils like of all time. I think I'm going to repurchase it sometime this summer even though I have such a plethora of other face oils and serums. Something about that product actually especially in the fall is when I noticed it to have a really beneficial impact on my skin. Um, and I am, I avoid the sun like a vampire, literally. To me, that's like the best SPF. I mean, I wear SPF every day, but I just really don't go in the sun very much. Minimal, I would say. But that product I just felt was so healing and regenerating and beautifying to my skin. <clears throat> I finished it up last fall and I've been missing it ever since. So that's the other sort of summer skincare must. Although that would also go in like a fall skincare favorites video as well. Okay. Now moving on to actual sun protection and you will be able to see my favorite brand very clearly from this trio. Suntegrity is definitely my favorite SPF as since before I sort of was opting for uh, cleaner or greener products. I've been wearing a face sunscreen via a sort of sunscreen moisturizer since I was in high school I think is when I first started. I used to wear the Neutrogena it was like in a white little pump bottle. And then when I got into college, I started wearing the Kiehl's uh, Ultra Protect or something. And then I wore the Laura Mercier tinted moisturizer with SPF for a while. So that was kind of my arc with SPFs. And I've tried quite a few in the eco space. I did a whole video that's now a bit outdated, um, but I'll link it for you doing like a, a comparison of all the S base SPFs I had tried. Um, I have also included a body one here, but this is the Suntegrity 5-in-1 Natural Moisturizing Face Sunscreen. I use it in the shade light. I actually need to get another one of those. And then last year I picked up the untinted Suntegrity. This can be used, I think, for yeah, it's face sunscreen and primer. And then just this year, I decided to try their mineral sunscreen for body, which I haven't tried yet, so I can't really speak to it. All of these products are SPF 30. I would sort of prefer an SPF 50, honestly, but it's really hard to find uh, a clean sunscreen with that high of an SPF. These are 20% zinc oxide. Another thing that I've been thinking about is I would like to find an SPF that has both titanium oxide and zinc oxide to get like the full spectrum. Um, I don't want this to turn into a whole SPF video. Jess from Stark Skincare actually did a great video on her perspective on eco sunscreens. It's a very personal thing. Um, I really don't like using chemical sunscreens. I prefer something that's 100% mineral. Um, that's just a medical intuitive thing. Apparently it's similar to retinols. He just gets patently negative responses to any vitamin A skincare product and any chemical sunscreen just because of the pathways that your body has to go through to metabolize them. It's not going to kill you, obviously. It's just adding to the burden that your body has to deal with, which is like a whole topic for another day. So yeah, I don't think chemical sunscreens are the devil at all. I just really don't like to use them. Although I don't know, more and more I am sort of I don't know, I, I'm just sort of refining my position. I am really happy with all of these, but like I'm saying, I would prefer to find one that's titanium and zinc oxide and a higher SPF, just because I'm feeling like particularly anal about SPF lately, I don't know why. I am also using the Josh Rosebrook, but it's, and maybe someone can tell me, um, I think that's also SPF 30, but the concentration of zinc is lower. It's at 12% zinc oxide, whereas these are 20. So in my mind, these are a little bit more heavy duty for like actually being in the sun. Um, the Josh Rosebrook is sort of like my everyday commuting to and from work out and about sunscreen, which I do touch up with a mineral powder. And I couldn't really figure out where to put this in this video. It sort of is, sits in between the makeup section and the SPF section. So this is the Arcona Nearly Invisible SPF 30 Dry Mineral Powder that I got recently, like in the last month. Now this is both zinc, or this might just be titanium dioxide actually. It definitely has titanium dioxide in it. So that's why I've been liking to layer these. I have like a lot of extended thoughts on this. I mean, not a lot. I, the main thing is that I worry that when I dispense the product, if I use the brush directly on my face, I feel like I'm inhaling a bit too much of the product and that sort of bothers me. I actually do really like the performance of this though. I don't find that it's too heavy on my skin and it's obviously really nice and portable, but part of me wants to just like 
totally go to town and take this apart and decant the powder into a sifter and use it like with a beauty blender or a brush or something. Um, I'm just not a loose mineral powder person. I guess you could also, if you were able to get the powder out of this, you could mix it with a moisturizer and create like your own tinted moisturizer. Yeah, so I am a fan of like layering SPFs and reapplying, although I personally don't share everybody's like real obsession with reapplying every two hours unless you are actually out in the sun, at the beach, in the water, doing beach sports, flying a kite. I don't do any of that stuff. I like to walk on a cloudy beach. That is my MO. But for example, if I was going to be out like in, in and out of sun, I would take this along and reapply it like midday, maybe one other time. Oh, one other, I guess, quick thing I could note about this. I like the Arcona product because the price point's really quite good. I got this on sale uh, during like a derm store 20% off for like 38. The Color Science one is another one that's comparable. Eminence also does one. The main issue with this I've heard from ingredient purists of which I am not one is that this has bismuth oxychloride. I don't even know if that's the right ingredient, but it has an additive to it that bothers some people. So if that's a concern of yours, you are welcome to spend 20 plus dollars more for the Color Science one, which does not have it. Okay, now for people like me who are very pale. I'm like an NC 15 to 20 probably. Um, sometimes I feel like my face looks a little darker, especially on camera because I do use bronzer and makeup that I feel makes me sometimes look a little bit darker, but I really am quite pale. I am a fan of sort of self tanning products to help me fake a glow. It sounds like so cheesy. I, this is basically an empty product. I just ordered a new one. It's Eco Tan Invisible Tan Self Tanning Cream. Um, even though I am so pale, I got the darker one. I think they have like a lighter one for like light to medium skins, but in the, I've been using self tanners for many years <laughs> to like, I've had like some embarrassing self tanning stories too. Like I, the very first one I remember using was like the Jerkins. Do you guys remember when that first came on the market? I, I remember using that stuff stank to like high heavens. This is sort of the cleanest option that I found for self tanners. Uh, it's an Australian company, so it's made in Australia, not animal tested. It's vegan, certified organic ingredients up to 80%. I have really enjoyed it. It's not cheap. It's like $45 plus shipping, so it's like a $50 investment, but this lasted me an entire year of self tanning. I self tan definitely more in the summertime, probably every two weeks I would do an application of this on my legs, sometimes on my arms. I don't really self tan my arms that often. I really just care about my legs looking like a little less pale and veiny. I also have very um, like translucent skin, so you can see my veins quite easily, which is you know, really not that attractive on the legs. <laughs> but having a layer of self tan, and then adding a layer of pretty potion on my legs, I feel helps camouflage, um, I don't know, just like skin texture, imperfections, cellulite, not that there's anything wrong with that, we all have it, but the pretty potion, it's basically like makeup for your skin, it's just a nice, it's similar to something like the, um, do you guys remember that Michael Kors, so it looks like it's in a deodorant stick. I used to have that and like roll that on my legs in college. I remember in like one of my sorority rushes, I was like rolling that on my legs. I don't know, like random memory. Yeah, so I've had this actually for probably two or three years. It's still good and it lasts a very long time. Um, I have, this comes in different shades. I actually have it in the shade dark. So as you can tell, my philosophy with these sorts of products is to go darker than your skin tone because I just find that the light to medium for the amount that you pay, I don't really think you get the right color payoff. So yeah, I really recommend both of these products for beautiful summer skin if you are a sun avoider like me. Now, as far as makeup, moving this over, I actually want to do a get ready with me video because I have a favorite like summertime makeup look. It's sort of similar. I did do a summer makeup look from last summer. It's similar, but it involves, I'm getting into veering away from like black liquid liner every day. I've been experimenting with 
sort of bronzy brown eyeliner smudged in and then sort of winged out with shadow and I've really been liking that paired with some of the other makeup that I'll tell you today. But first, I'm not a big powder wearer. As you can probably tell from this video, I really like my skin to look like pretty glowy. So I pretty much will only powder under my eyes and my nose, sometimes my chin. But I do feel that having like a good pressed powder in your uh, makeup bag is nice for summertime. So the one that I have used and really like is the Antonym. Um, I have the baked foundation in the shade light. So I really like this um, for sort of like maybe additional coverage over Suntegrity or with RMS on cover up, which I also really like. I find that the coverage is you know, light to medium, not cakey. It is mattifying, but again, I'm not really the person to ask about oil mattification. It's just never been a concern of mine. But if you are looking for a really beautiful, uh, cleanly formulated pressed powder, this is a really nice one. Um, it, I don't know. It apparently, according to some people on the Green Beauty Insiders Facebook group, which by the way, I'm about to exit stage left. That place is toxic. <laughs> uh, you know I couldn't get through one of these videos without speaking my mind. Apparently according to, this was like a thread from a while ago, these do have like shimmer in them. I've never noticed it, but um, apparently some makeup artists were saying that they have like micro shimmer, which is an issue on photo shoots, but obviously if you're just a day-to-day -day powder user, I think it's perfect. Another option would be the RMS Translucent on powder, which I find I get more use of in the summertime and I really enjoy. Uh, another sort of little fun product that I think is nice for summer are the Tatcha Abora Torigami blotting papers. I think I showed these kind of recently. And you know, I think that they're actually really nice. I re read an article on Man Repeller because Marina from Mahalo was interviewed by Man Repeller and in that same article they were also talking about the founder of Tatcha and Zalens. Uh, it was an article on indie beauty skincare brand Genesis and development. And so I learned that this was actually the first product that Tatcha had ever developed. To be honest, I've tried Tatcha skincare and it doesn't really do it for me, but these I do like. So if you're looking for just kind of like a little luxury, again, to sort of keep you mattified during the day, these are really transportable and easy and just kind of beautiful. In the summertime, I love wearing like a peachy blush. So I have two options. One is definitely not natural. It's my Chanel blush in reflex. I really only wear this in the summertime and it's so gorgeous. Another really pretty peachy pink option is the Eminence Chai Berry Blush. This had a moment on YouTube. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I've been on YouTube for three years, I realized, because I was talking with Jess about it. I was like, wow. If you want to know the truth, it feels like a lot longer than that. <laughs> it, it's such like a labor of love. And when you look back at everything you've put into growing a channel and putting up content regularly, it's just a lot of work. I think that's why three years feels like 10. <laughs> this was actually a gift and I'm very appreciative to the person who sent it to me. I think it's really beautiful. Um, I haven't gotten a ton of use out of it this winter, but again, like I'm saying, this color is very, very summer appropriate in my for my sort of color palette and preference. So those are some peachy options. Now, as far as what I, kind of like my go-to summer look is, I don't like to do bronzer and blush, so I'll just do kind of like a peachy blush or I mean, really it's sort of like my go-to every day is just some powdered bronzer with a little highlight on top. Today I'm actually wearing the Well People Cream Bronzer, but in the summer I much more often will opt for a powder. And this is <clears throat> the Studio 78 powder in O2. I, this has been like a Mercedes Hall of Fame product for a while. This is actually my second one of these and I really like it. I don't honestly even know if this company still exists. You guys should know that I'm like very out of the loop with like green beauty and new releases and what people are talking about. I have really like quarantined myself from a lot of that, but yeah, I've loved this product for a while. Maybe there are other really nice pressed powder bronzers on the market now, but this one just really works for me. I also wanted to give a shout out to 
the brush that I used to apply it because it's very pigmented. I had had a MAC 187 for a long time. It was shedding so horribly and the, what is this called again? Oh my God, I'm blanking. I can't remember what this part of the brush is called, but you know what I mean. The bristles were just all coming loose and it was like a mess. I had to toss it. I ended up getting the Makeup Forever 122 brush and it is perfection. Zero shedding, it's really soft and it's sort of a perfect companion to a highly pigmented powder product. Favorite highlight in the summertime is Modern Minerals Moonstone because it is like rose gold peachy perfection. If you want to see this in comparison to other highlighters, you can check out my highlighter lineup video. I did, really did not reach for this at all this winter. Um, I was mostly reaching for Well People Bio Brightener or the Tata Harper Illuminator, but this is just in the summertime for a sun-kissed glow. This over top of a powder bronzer or a peachy blush is really, really nice. So because of my sort of skin tones and undertones, I don't go for a lot of orangey tomato reds. Um, they just don't, they're not the best on me. I can wear them, but I think I do better with something that's a little bit more coral which tends to have a bit more pink in it than just like a tomato red for example so i pulled um several options and i'll probably include i think i'm going to do lost cherry in the get ready with me mahalo red my lips is a super beautiful summertime red it's just a really really interesting red i'll do swatches of these actually just something really kind of vibrant is what I like to do in the summer. Um, I recently picked up the Glossier Generation G Lippy in Zip. I haven't worn it that much, but I think it'll be kind of a nice summer shade. So that's Zip. Actually, Zip looks quite similar to Charlotte Tilbury Lost Cherry. I'm always like, oh my God, did my camera automatically stop recording? Yeah, it's similar. Um, Zip is a little bit less kind of vibrant, I guess. I don't, I don't even know how I would really describe the difference, but you can see these are all sort of in the same color family. It's like a coral or like a bright balance of orangey, reddy pink. And that is my favorite summertime bold. I also pulled MAC Lady Danger which is probably the most orange lipstick I have now. It looks so pretty on um, people that have a little bit more yellow in their skin, yellow undertones. Um, I can wear it. It doesn't look as good on me as some I've seen it on some other people. So these would be my summertime lipstick picks. Like paired with br minimal, like just lightly bronzed skin and a very minimal eye, like so gorgeous. And then I really only have one nail polish that I exclusively reach for in the summer and it's Essie's Geranium, which is like a tomato red. It actually looks sort of neon on me, which is interesting, but I really love this on both toes and fingers. If anyone has a cleaner formulation nail polish in this color, I feel like I've asked that before. Um, and I got a lot of wrecks. I think Zoya might do one, and I'm forgetting, but I do really like this. I don't really have anything else uh, in my nail polish collection that is just summer appropriate, but I did, like, I, you know, I pulled this out because I had an experience with this polish this week. I hadn't worn it in a while. It's Shisui Hot Dam. It's, old, it's from an old, old Petty Vore box, like, two or three years ago. I put it on my nails and I like, I've hated it all week. Like I do not like this color on me anymore. And I used to love this polish. In fact, this used to be kind of more of a summertime polish for me and I can't stand it anymore. Like all week I was like, ugh, I just left it on. I don't know what it is. It's, it's almost like I fell out of sync with this color and I feel like I've also become more sensitive to color harmonization. I've talked about this before. And I just don't really feel like it's a resonant color with me anymore. So I'm putting this in my like makeup declutter bag. So yeah, 
that's a weird note to end this video on. I hope you enjoyed hearing about my summer beauty picks and recommendations. If you have any summer beauty favorites, please share them in the comments with me and with everybody else. Make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my upcoming face oil lineup video. I have a whole list going. I've been going to different Eco Beauty retailer websites and scouring the inventory to see what I've tried in the past and maybe forgotten about. So it's going to be very comprehensive about my personal history and experience with different face oils and serums. So that's my next big project. I will be doing May Favorites, June Beauty Heroes, this summer makeup get ready with me, so lots of good stuff in store. Everything I talked about will be listed and linked below for your shopping pleasure. And I did also wanna say thank you so much for all of, I should have said this at the beginning of the video, but thank you all so much for your amazing support and nice words on my vlog that I did last Sunday. The response was just so nice and it's, you know, it's always a bit of a risk to put a new, new kind of content out. But you guys seem to really like it and thank you so much to everybody that preemptively said that they would you know be open to supporting a patreon account for la more la musica just like just hearing all you guys say that i was like oh my gosh like it's really a, a community and it, you really would support my channel in that way it just really struck me and I'm just thank you so much so I'm actually going to do um, a little bit more research on patreon to figure out how I want to set it up and I'll make an announcement when that happens and I want to do more vlogs get a vlogging camera that would be the whole point of patreon now I'm totally rambling I'll see you guys in my next video soon bye